I thank the Lord for his goodness. I thank him for his presence here this morning. And what I have to talk about and share goes perfectly what we've been talking about. It's amazing how God directs and works. And um, uh, what I want to talk about this morning is taste. Um, the title of the sermon will be Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And um, so this is what we're talking about. And uh, I'm talking about his presence and how he, how he works in our lives and, and um, worship and a lot of different things. So um, let's turn to Philip, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 8. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then it goes on and says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue... And if there be any praise, think on these things. Let's pray. Dad, do you mind praying for us? Uh, we thank you this morning for your sweet presence here. So the Holy Spirit, that we can feel. Yes, Lord. Can taste and see that the Lord is good. You are a wonderful man. It's a wonderful God. You said we're going to bring you together where you are. You yes, are Lord. Here with us. Thank you for that. We ask you to bless Daniel as he lifts up his heart to you and that he can share your word, your spirit and truth, and let us receive it in that way. We ask you to bless this servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I guess we're talking, some of us are talking about resolutions and things. You know, my heart's desire is to spend more time in his presence, be in his presence more every day. Um, you know, if we dwell in his presence, it's going to change our lives. It's going to make us more like Him. Because the more we're with Him, the more we're like Him. And um, so that's my, that's my goal. That's my, my, uh, my desire, to be more like Jesus and to be, be in His presence. And when we're in His presence, things are going to happen. We're going to worship. We're going to see things. God's going to, God, God will talk to us. to show things through His Word especially as we read his word and, and search and seek him and study. Anyways, and then we'll go to, um, like right here, verses, uh, verse 6 talks, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request may, be made known unto God. How do we come to God? With thanksgiving. As we enter, as we come to him before him in the mornings or whatever our time might be, is to come to him with thankfulness in the heart. Because um, I mean, me personally, he's done so much in my own life. Probably the last three to five years, there's been things that um, we face personally as a family. And uh, struggles and things that I'm careful to talk about here. But I know, I know what God can do for us and his faithfulness to us to help us through things. And though there might be hard times, but, to, but we don't want to forget about those things that he brings us through. When I come to him in thankfulness, be thankful. And we come to thankful, and then, like in the verses, like a couple of verses before that, it said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, to rejoice in him. Because if we have a grateful heart, a heart of gratitude, um, you know, and thankfulness to him, it shows our, our gratefulness, our, our, how would you say, we're not... You know, sometimes, you, let's say you do something for people and they do, you do quite a bit for them and they, they, don't, they seem, that's the word I want, ungrateful. I mean, it kind of, it's not a good feeling. You know, if we're grateful to God, he come, we come to Him and we're grateful and thankfulness. He appreciates that. He wants it to be appreciated and, and thanked. So anyway, that's a, one of the ways of approaching Him and humbling ourselves before Him and, you know, and if there is failures in our lives that we, we can just humbly come before him. He says he resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. I mean, God can, he can see a proud far off. And he, he resists. It's, it's, he's against the proud. 
So if we're humble before him and come to him in humbleness of heart and whatever our need might be, then thankfulness, he can help us. And then it goes on and says, uh, <clears throat> about uh, verse 7, and that's uh, one time there's this um, gentleman, good, good friend of mine, brother in the Lord. He was struggling and um, even some, some nerve problems maybe and some struggle with his mind and things like that. And the Lord, uh, this came, verse came to me, and I shared it with him and helped him. But, you know, in our own problems, let's say we have emotional problems or, or problem with our mind, with nerves or things we're struggling with. The next verse says, And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts, what's the next one say, and minds through Christ Jesus. And that stood out to me. And it's like, you know, he can keep our minds too. Not just our hearts, but our minds, whatever we might be facing them. Think, you know, we might have struggles with those things. God can help us and strengthen. He is the answer for all of our problems. And that's what I believe. And uh, if we are willing to humble ourselves and, and just reach out to him and, you know, help him, help, let him help us. And, uh, and then it goes on the things that we should think about. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, think about the lovely things. Maybe things, let's say there's things in your past to struggle with, you know, be positive. Think on, on, give those things to God and think on the lovely things and what he's done, he wants to do for, your life, for you and what he's done for our lives. And then um, whatsoever things are of good report, good report things. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, things that are praiseworthy. And, uh, and then I want to go share about, about his presence. Let's go to um, Psalm 1611. Psalm 1611. I might use my phone a little bit. Let's go to Psalm 1611. We're going to be going through the Word of God here a little bit. We're going to be talking about um, his presence. And see, if we come before him and walk with him, you know, one of those things we, we do um, when you spend time with God, we come in his presence. We spend, and in his presence, he helps us. So Psalm 1611. So what is in his presence? It says, um, Thou, sh thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So where are we finding our pleasures? Where are we finding fullness of joy? You know, like you said, I like to hunt too. And there's some things God blesses. He allows us He allows us to enjoy some things. But what's our priority? What, what's your full fullness of joy? When you spend time with God and you draw near to Him and He really blesses your heart and soul, that dims, you know, you know, I've been out there even hunting before, taking my hat off, might be a little chilly, but taking my hat off, spend time and get drawn near to God, and he comes and blesses me there. Something I'm even thinking about hunting them. I'm, I'm focusing on God and oh, he's wor uh, how he worked in my life and, and being blessed with his presence. I mean, to me, yes, we can enjoy some of those things. Maybe, I mean, some people might go after money or whatever and things, but what's most important, what we talked about this morning, we're talking about, is his presence, being bathed, saturated with his presence, walking with him, and that's what I want more, that's my goal for this year, and uh, so it's fullness of joy, and what does joy give you? It gives you strength, you can walk, and you can endure, you can um, walk with the Lord, and you know, and where you get that joy? Through his, through his presence, through being close to him, walking with him. You know, it's not in your own flesh or whatever. Those things might be for a season, they might whatever, but in the end, they don't satisfy. And, you know, whatever you might go through, things in this world, or even you go out there and be cold and go out after the flesh and do these things, it doesn't satisfy in the long run. If anything, it brings guilt and misery in your life. So, and then it goes on and talks about, um, then the next one we're going to look at, Exodus 34, 14, and 15. Exodus 34. Let's see here. 
Oh, access trader. You went the wrong one. Yeah, hang just a sec here. <laughs> we'll find it here. Exodus 34. Oh, 33, sorry. And then we go 14 and 15. So then here it talks about, um, and he said, my presence shall go with thee. This is talking about Moses talking, coming to God. And um, when God was calling him to go lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said, now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, Verse 13, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. He goes on and says, and he said, God said, my presence shall go with thee and I shall give thee rest. What is in that presence? Rest. Give you rest. That's where we find rest. We might have problems and struggles and whatever we might be facing, but we can go to God, find that rest. And, um, so that's the key, and uh, I'm gonna I just share a little bit as far as um, like I said, a lot of these things go together. What we were talking and talking about this morning, my dad, like his example, has been an example to my life and how how that is to follow God, walk after God. And there's one example I want to bring out that um, some years ago he was struggling with something. And it was really burdened and just down. You hardly feel like him getting up. He couldn't already go on. He went to his office and he got down, down on his knees, his face before God, just lay before God. God, I can't go on. And uh, God talked to him and said, What did Job do? He worshiped, fell down and worship. When Job got down the end, he fell down and worshiped me. Since that's what you do. You worshiped him. Before he knew it, he was up on his feet, encouraged and, <laughs> and the Lord and ready to go. <laughs> so that's that's the difference. God can make in our lives, you know? Walk with him, to worship him. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about worship here in a little bit, but um in Psalms then about security in his presence. Psalm thirty one twenty. Psalm thirty one twenty. It says, um, goes on and talks about here, Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of, of tongues. Security. You know, in you might be, even people might be coming against you. I know some of you left the Amish and this and that, a lot of different stuff that can happen, and people talk and whatever, but, you know, we're, if we're in his presence, God gives us comfort. He hides us. Those things, those words or whatever might come up towards us, against us, they can bounce off. You know, he's protecting us. And so, even to be just in his protection. And if we're in his presence, we're his child, he takes care of us. He protects us in those things. <clears throat> and then also, uh, uh, talk about the flesh. This is going to be... Uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 28 through 31. First Corinthians chapter 1. Just different aspects about the, the him being in his presence, what he does for us. 28. And these things, uh, and, the, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh shall glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Right there, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You know, if we were really before God in his presence, he comes and touches all his, uh, uh, our soul and his holiness is he's there. He's a holy God. We're not going to feel any glory in ourselves. We're going to be humble before him. We're going to see our own need of him, our own undoneness and things, where our, our own failures, where we failed and things. And so, you know, 
if you're really truly in His presence in a real way, and God talks, show, shows up, and He's there working in our lives, it's gonna make it, it's gonna we're gonna see it's gonna humble us, and that if we're willing to humble ourselves, you know, that's the only way we get to Him, anyways, in His presence and humbling ourselves, being humble before Him. And then it goes on, and it's like you know, God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. And then, um, then in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, six through 8, mean? Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 through 8, I'm going to share that a little bit. Um, I'll start in verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him, to talk of him there, talking about Moses um, up on the mount with him there. And proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. This is Moses. Let me just go back here. Maybe we can go further here. Yeah, okay. Verse 6. Verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children, and upon unto the third and the fourth unto the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Now that's that's the attitude. If we really God shows up, we're gonna have an attitude of worship and humility. He made haste and bowed and worshiped. But what did God what did he see? What did what did God say? The Lord God, merciful. What do we see when we get His presence? That's as I see it from time to time. Merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth. You know, and if we see that, and we're in His presence, God can help give that to us, that goodness and long-suffering, His Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, and we live in that, he can, it can show out to other people. We can have that compassion. And another thing is I want to share that, you know, the things that we go through, it can draw us, send us to God, can draw us to God, towards God. And because sometimes, you know, some people, if life goes well for them and everything goes just hunger dory and goes sweet, you know, they may have never come to God. It takes sometimes heartaches and, and troubles. And I, I just... I just met uh, one of my cousins just recently, shared a little bit with me, and he, uh, he lost four children from the month, and they're all four within about a month old to like four months old in the last about, I don't know, it was maybe six, eight years, something like that. Well, I think one was further back, but the last one about three years ago, the night before it passed away, it, God did a miracle, I guess. He didn't, we didn't go in detail yet, but sometime we'll get together and talk about it, but through those circumstances, he helped draw him to God, and that's how he, how he knew got to know God, how he got born again. He was Amish, and, and he's still Amish at, at this point. But it's amazing how God can use him. He said, hey, if it went from the last baby that passed away, he didn't know if he would eat where he would be today. So God uses things in our lives to draw us to Him. Sometimes, you know, um, sometimes our own doings, our own sin, you know, people that don't know Him. Um, can take us down to the point where we're on the bottom of the pit looking up, need help. So, amen. In our own lives, someday after, like me personally, even I was saved at a younger age, but I, and to, the, to life, you know, get older, become a man, this and that happens. And, you know, I feel God many times. And there's been times in my life I'm not proud of. I've been backslid. But, it's the mercy of God. He brings, sometimes the things we go through can draw us to Him and help us reach out in a more real way and find out that we really need Him. And that's, um, you know, <laughs> and I'm thankful for those times. Maybe at the time, you know, how, how can you be thankful for this? But His Word says, in all things, be thankful in all things. Maybe not necessarily just for those things, but in all things, be thankful. In, God's, in those situations, God can use to work in our lives, make us more like Him. And that's, 
That's my desire. I just want to be more in His presence every day and walk with Him. You know, there's many distractions, things that can pull us away, like this thing right here, phones. I mean, everybody, I mean, there's, I mean, there's everything on your fingertips right there. And there's so many different things that the devil can try to distract you and take your time away. You know, spend time on that instead of with the Lord. I mean, if we would spend as much time on this, as, I mean, on the, with the Lord as we would this sometimes, I think, you know, that's what's important to us, you know. I mean, God would do things in our lives and in, in our community, you know. So, I mean, I, you know, growing up in a Christian home and everything, I mean, it's, I'm the poor young people. I mean, it, it's so, it's, it's, things are there, and it's so easy to get, you know, to see things nowadays. I mean, garbage and whatever else. But may God help us to stay close to Him and His presence. That's where we're going to find victory. That's where we're going to find strength in over those things. Not in our own selves, our own flesh, but like in His presence, that's where He feeds our spirit. That's where, and when His Word, studying His Word, you know, feeding, feeding our spirit and starving, you know, starving the flesh. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, so that's, amen. So, and then I want to go to talk about worship a little bit. You know, different places in the Bible, I could go through different places here and, and, um, and look, there's all kinds of where, where it talks about what does it talk about worship? A lot of time when you read about worship in the Bible is when they you find them bowing their head, they hasty, they, they bow themselves to the earth or bow their head. It's an it's a sign of humility, adoration. And another thing is, um, what what did the devil tell the Jesus and one of the temptations? He said uh, one of the last ones was one of the ones he said was, if you bow down here and worship me. I'll give you everything. What was Jesus, well, if Jesus would have done that, what was he doing? Worshiping, surrendering himself to him. If you worship something, you're going to surrender yourself to him. Like we worship God in, in spirit, raise our hands. Um, like in raising the hands, one of we looking at is hey, raise our hands and surrender. We're worshiping him, you know? So that's the thing. You know, have the adoration. He, my dad shared one time about he was over in Romania. And I think it was over there. And this lady come into this um, this Catholic church. He happened to be there watching or looking or whatever. And here she comes. And there's an image of Mary. where she comes up there so reverently in worship. You know, we can worship in the flesh too in some things. Some people worship maybe money or different things. But the thing is, we can come out and worship. If she came out and just wore on and bow before that image. That's an idol. And that's what they did in the Old Testament. And God, you know, it got punished for it sometimes, like that golden calf and whatever. But we want to, when we're in His presence, it puts an awe and adoration in his, our hearts for the Lord. When really, truly, He's there and blessing our soul and ministering to us. And um, where um, for me, a lot of times, you know, it brings tears. I had, you know, but that's one of my ways of showing or communicate, communicating it sometimes to the Lord. But. Um, but being thankful. We want to remember to be thankful. And, and what those things, like I don't want to forget for the things that he brought me through and I went through. And being having a grateful heart and thankful, being thankful about it. And his faithfulness to us. So I thank the Lord for his faithfulness in my own life. I intend to be more like Jesus, be more him, like him, have his mind and spirit uh, upon us. Mm -hmm.